I have this self-defeatist attitude, like he's like, I don't want to get better. I don't want to feel the joy of getting better. Something inside me is fighting against it. And I've always been like that with a lot of things for almost my whole life. And uh, he, he, he said it right then and there before the camera's rolling. It's like, it, it's just really hard to get better yeah. when uh, you just fighting yourself. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, my name is Michael, 26 years old, almost 27. And uh, for about six months, I was a shift lead at Walgreens up until very recently. Gotcha. Why did you come 2,500 miles to come see me? Um, I have a tremendous amount of minor to moderate issues, but the biggest one being for sure is my complete lack of just like sleeping irregularities. Sleep. Insomnia. Yeah, yeah. Lots of neck pain? Yes, in neck pain. Areas. Gotcha. No headaches? Sides. The top. Tell us about the chest pain too. Yeah, I get this terrible tightness in my clavicles up here. It's gotcha. unbearable. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Tell us about your low back pain. Yeah, I get left sciatica pain. It flares up when I start walking for like a long time, like two weeks, and then it'll stay on forever, but. Yeah, and so he quit his job. Tell us about quitting your job. Why'd you do that, sir? Because uh, uh, my sciatic pain was uh, so unbearable that I had to leave. What symptoms are driving you nuts? I um, have terrible anxiety and depression. Like I'll have a depression episode once every few days. You can't tell, but his spine is messed up. Let's take a look. He has a 36 millimeter imbalance. That's huge, 25 degree scoliosis. On this one, he has 27 degree scoliosis and significant constipation. Here we have a bone spur off the back of his head and we have one third atlas square. Here we have confirmation of that constipation and antalgic position. When you come to my office, we put a class together of all patients that are new and we discuss things together, finding out what is working and what is not working. Let's find out how Mike did after his first adjustment. Yeah, so, so it was a lot more dull this time and the pain went away a lot more quickly. Good, good, good. And my left sciatic pinch that I get when I relax my torso when I lay down, that was also significantly reduced, also went away. Quicker, Quick, quicker, right? Quicker, yes. But then when you say you slept not as good as you thought you would, yeah. uh, remember we're not looking for quantity of sleep, we're looking for quality. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody equates quantity as an important thing. It's not like you slept 10 hours, but if you slept two hours but woke up going, man, I feel kind of good. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. It's mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. The quantity will come. And so uh, did you sleep, like, did you wake up a tiny bit more refreshed than usual? Or it was the same kind of refreshness. It was easier to wake up. So now we're doing a little round robin where each person gets to talk. And the reason for this is because we all learn from each other. We don't have the same experiences, but we're doing it together as a class. So each person learns from the other. So you'll learn way faster in this class situation, which I really enjoy. It's a little bit hectic sometimes, but it is really fun. And I've seen tremendous benefit from doing it together. Okay, so <clears throat> he used the chart. This chart right here uh, has times on here about what time he did it, or what he's doing and what he's feeling. I'm not sure if it's exactly right, but this is, it gives you an idea of how to do it, okay? So 4 p.m., uh, walking around building, perfect. Neck pain, okay? A uh, new pain, is it new pain? Yes, new, new pain. pain. Gotcha, yeah. perfect. And uh, so just a little bit more about new pain, meaning first lap, second lap, third lap, um, where it started in the future, okay. and then maybe the level of pain, two, three, four, okay? okay? Perfect, that was a good note though, at least I understand. Sitting. Sitting in your car, sitting in a hotel, sitting at a dining room table, sitting on the ground. I need to know where you're sitting. Okay. Okay. And if you're sitting and you're on your phone or you're on a computer, I want to know that too. We're sitting down here talking about muscle memory and how things need to change. And when you do make changes, sometimes it's a little sore. So we're talking about the coat hanger effect. Why don't we listen in and see what is that your brain and your muscle memory okay. wants to go back to the way it was. Okay. So there's a certain comfort in that. That's why you felt a certain way. Your body's used to being mm -hmm. like this. So you're like, oh, this feels so good. And then when I make you do something different, it irritates you because it's different, <laughs> yes. right? But you yes. have to learn how to allow your body to rest on itself. I call your body as, you can leave in a couple minutes. I have your body, uh, think of it as a, as a coat hanger. Mm. You're just trying to drape your body, your skin over your coat hanger. Okay guys, this is Wednesday and so this is the next day and we've already gone over the notes you saw it in the first video and I'm showing you this one because this is really important because each day matters. I'm going to get on Michael here about not doing something for me. He needed to bring me notes and he didn't and you can tell he doesn't care. So I got on a little bit because why? Because he needs to pay attention. We need to get better. Let's work. I uh, forgot my notes, sir. Where are they? Uh, they're at home. Hey, what I, did I tell you this last time, uh, Jesus? Remember last? When, did I tell you this? Or you hear this? Every Wednesday, people screw up. 
it's, it's something that happens. It's just so funny because as people start to feel better, they don't take it seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they ease off. Yeah. They ease yeah, off. It's, it's, yeah. it, but it's only been the one single issue with, with the with the. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about taking what I say and doing what I tell yeah. you. And uh, it just three days in, you have two weeks, and you're already messing up. So each thing is important. So you got to make sure you pay attention to all my notes mm -hmm. and what I tell you and bring you notes. And so this is a wasted day. And you're going to tell me what's on those notes, but again, that doesn't help me as much as you think. Okay, so make sure you bring them. Okay. okay. And so uh, what I told him is what I'm going to tell you is that um, people want to get here and they, they think they have cognitive ability to listen to me. They don't. Because of the lack of sleep, you have anxiety, the anxiety and the depression. So it's hard to listen to the words I'm saying. Okay. Makes and sense. And so it makes sense a little bit, right? Yeah. But it, the funny thing is as the days go by, my voice actually sounds more logical as every day goes by. And the reason it sounds more logical is because you're getting better sleep every day. So you're not really catching up to the words I'm saying for several days. So it's hard for everything to kick in until your brain is caught up with the information that's coming out of my mouth. How much time do you have for fun when you're in Southern California versus me teaching you how to do things? Almost no time at all. <laughs> <laughs> Almost no time. I like to take your program like seriously and get, and get the best results you can possibly get. You have virtually no time. Good. So we keep all our stress on our shoulders. Now I'm gonna adjust your neck here. Let your hip fall this way. This is gonna feel fantastic. Drop, drop. Good, dude. Oh, wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> you were yeah. scared setting up with that one? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, this one this way. Come, come, come. The short neck. Okay. Beautiful, good. Okay. okay, so tell us uh, how frustrated you are with all this right now. Very frustrated. Good, tell us uh, what kind of level of frustration you had, a 10 out of 10 kind of frustration? Uh, or, uh, almost. Almost, so almost, what yeah. is the frustration? Tell them what is so hard about this. Uh, just learning, trying to relax, embrace the, uh, the process. Because it's like, I, I talk about it there with like some of the uh, patients, I talk about it with you. And it's like, I have a lot of issues with a very deep seated anxiety. And I know when I feel that anxiety, it, I can feel it all building up in here. But once I talk about it, I try to become less anxious and just relax more. The pain goes down and I feel a lot easier. And it's like, it's just like this battle with myself. It's, uh, it's, it's challenging, it's yep, very challenging. Challenge. He couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, that's exactly what we're seeing with him. And uh, again, the class is helping him and we're helping him. We're doing the best we can to get through this issue. And he has a lot of homework this weekend. Just has a lot of homework. That's right. And I, pen and paper in my pocket right now. Perfect. Whenever it's time. You're doing a great job, by the way. You're relaxing really well. One more breath. Good. Okay. Oh, chair adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where he's going. Okay. Good. Drop. Drop. How painful is this? Nine, eight, seven. Seven, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, ten. Gotcha. Mm. Mm. Slow down. In the nose, out the mouth. One more. Good. So, this next week, this is where we're going to adjust to next week. Hey everybody, stay with us a little bit longer. Watch Michael, he is on the verge of quitting here. He is really distraught and he becomes kind of emotional in this. Um, this is the hard part guys, this is the transition between staying in pain the rest of your life and getting out of pain. 
you have to make a decision. Let's watch Michael do it. Basically just uh, trying to like accept the process of what's happening. Because like every, everyone else is getting better, but... And it's frustrating even more they're getting better, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is. It's frustrating. And I do, I have noticed, still have noticed objective improvements in my body, but it's like uh, he, he nailed it on the head. I'm just, um, I have like this self-defeatist attitude and I just don't want to get better. And uh, like everything he's saying has been completely consistent with like what everyone else who knows in their life have been saying about me too. So uh, it's, it's all consistent and it's been, it's helping me more objectively realize like how I don't, I have this self-defeatist attitude like he's like, I don't want to get better. I don't want to feel the joy of getting better. Something inside me is fighting against it. And I've always been like that with a lot of things for almost my whole life. And uh, he, he, he said it right then and there before the camera's rolling. It's like, it, it's just really hard to get better yeah. when uh, you just fighting yourself. Yeah. It's hard. And so uh, you can see how emotional he is about this. And it's not just emotional here. He's emotional about every bit of this whole situation because he wants to get better. I know he does. He just doesn't have the tools mentally to get better. And what does that mean? It's not like he's dumb, not even close to that. He's a very smart kid, probably really smarter than a lot of us. But the problem is he thinks way too much about crap yep. and he's just lives in the past and he wants to always tell me about all the fucking shit he has going on that this is the, the this is the problem here's the problem instead of dealing with now and moving forward he wants to deal with the past and so just again it's just a common thing guys and so i've seen this lots of times and again it's probably it's probably from birth you know and i hate to say this but there's probably some kind of emotional thing with his family dad mom you know, uncles, some kind of stupid thing where they pushed them down and didn't let them let them up. I mean, we all have this stuff in our family, guys. But this is the kind of stuff that can happen if you don't take care of that mental anguish, that mental stuff.